Welcome back. This is going to be my full technical analysis of the commodities market and the precious metals market. So we'll start out by looking at the US dollar index. And as you can see, we have rallied quite significantly. Uh, we are, have broken these highs. We are targeting the next highs here at uh, 94.79. And if that breaks, then we'll head all the way down up to the 200 memory average. This will have a uh, negative effect on commodities, precious metals, and so on. So that's why it's very important. It's not a 100% correlation. So even though the US dollar has increased today, it doesn't mean that, for example, oil has declined significantly. It has basically rallied today. And the same goes for, for gold and so on. But in most cases, it has, um, it has it is a negative correlation between commodities and precious metals and also stocks. So stocks have been hit uh, significantly more than uh, commodities and precious metals today. So, but if we look at the technical indicator, indicators, um, they are turning around at this point. Uh, we can see that the stochastic and the MACD are basically rounding off. That means that we have <clears throat> around uh, two or probably two more trading days where we will either rally up toward the, these highs and then turn around or 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 we'll trade sideways and then turn around i it is fairly impossible to say at the moment whether or not we go to the 200 moving average um, but if we break these highs that is a um, technical indication that we are going to go higher um, but at the moment the CCI is showing a great uh, a shadow here, and usually that is a bad signal. That shows that we are aggressively buying this, and we could basically be turning around within a few trading days. We can see what basically happened here. It can move really quickly to the upside. If you look at oil, I addressed this in the, on the Patreon account today, that... Um, I am not looking to uh, to buy this or sell this. The reason why I don't buy this is because we're in a downtrend. And uh, because we are, have an economy at the moment that is um, doing worse, the world economy, and that means the demand for oil is significantly lower. News was basically the reason why we have this rally today. And news only lasts in a very, very short run. When reality kicks in and people... And, and people find out that there is not that demand uh, for oil, then the price collapses significantly. We had a massive gap down towards the $34, uh, $34 level today, and then we rallied. We were quite oversold, so that is probably also a reason. But at this point, I'm looking to, uh, to um, sell this when we get to the 200 moving average. It is not very resistant to 200 moving average. It can be, for example, here, but it is the target, the main target is the 50 moving average. If we get to the 50 moving average, I'll definitely be a seller in this market because at this point, um, we are, you could probably, probably say, doing uh, lower lows and, and the gap down today and that the most of major economies are basically shutting down and can be shut down for several months. It's not just one month in Britain. It can be several months as, um, as some um, uh, cabinet members have pointed out. In the, in the, uh, so at, because of that, I think it's just inevitable that we'll go down to $30. But in order to do, in order to get the best trade as possible, is basically to buy here or just above something similar to this. See a candle that is weak, and then enter for a sell. So if we look at uh, natural gas, natural gas has pulled back quite uh, significantly today. But this is not a pullback that I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for something similar to this. So we'll find support here at 3.1. We'll find support, significant support here at 3. So it probably won't go lower than this, just because this is such a symbolic and, and psychological number that breaking 
uh, three is like yeah so usually most buyers come in when when you see those numbers two three and 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 just round numbers ten thousand for example in the nasdaq and and, and so on and eleven thousand uh, so this may be significant support but the best thing would be that we saw, saw something, something similar to this getting extremely close to the 50 moving average and then seeing a bullish candle indicating that we are going to go higher. Technical indicators for natural gas are very bearish. We are, we have been overbought for a very long time. MACD is crossing the signal line, the casting is crossing the signal line, and the CCI is pointing to lower levels. So it is just a matter of time before we break significantly. How far? Three is a good entry point. Best entry point is just at the 50 moving average with a stop loss right underneath the 50 moving average. So that's the reason I have no interest in basically buying at this at this moment because we are at 63. That means that we only had one good trading day and then we are at 70 and overbought and then it becomes too risky to basically hold that. So if you look at copper, the copper is doing some very strange things. Uh, first of all, this rally made no sense. Uh, then we had a mass, quite a lot of uh, massive pullback towards the 50 moving average, and then we're finding that the 50 moving average is support. Um, we can see that we tried to rally today, but these previous highs are still very resistant. So we pull back quite significantly at these highs. So we can see that this was just ridiculous. This, this made no sense. It was pure speculation of, um, of stimulus and so on that, that basically got that the price to 3.2. I was expecting at, uh, when we got around here that we would break down towards uh, 2.9 or 2.8. But if we break the 50 moving average, that opens the door to first these levels, 2.9. After that, it opens the level to 2.8 and then to 2.7 and 2.6. And it is actually 2.6 where... Uh, it is interesting to start buying this. You could start shorting this after it it reaches um, uh, it it, it uh, shows sign of a gray, a good gray, uh, red candlestick underneath there. But it is risky because we can see that there's a lot of support underneath, and the intervals in between the support is quite small. It's not a massive move to the downside and to find support. The intervals are quite short. So at, at the best trade here is technically the wait to see how far it will fall when it starts falling in order to buy. Technical indicators are, are still looking fairly bullish. MACD is not, Stochastic is, and uh, CCI is, and the RSI is. So we may start trading sideways, test this level several times. It is If it happens that we test, tested it one or two times more and, and then we can't break this uh, price level, then we'll start falling. That is almost guaranteed. So if you look at gold, gold has rallied up towards the 50 moving average, um, but I don't think it will break the 50 moving average. What I think is going to happen is that we will find resistance at the 50 moving average and then break lower towards the, the lows here. Uh, we can put them up around here at the 1800 and, and around 50. And then we will go towards 1800. Whether or not we ever get to 1800 is a question. and But that is what most buyers are looking for for gold. They want to enter at this point because they want to hold this for the long run. Gold is bullish in the long run due to the uh, massive amount that the governments will spend in the coming years. Uh, and also central banks will uh, pump liquidity in the market and that will get um, the gold prices to go higher. It will basically work as a safe haven. 
uh, for most investors. And that will push this, uh, push this significantly higher. I don't think we are going to breach the 20, uh, 50 moving average. If we do, then we'll find significant resistance here. And if that resistance breaks, then of course, I will certainly um, enter this market around, uh, where is it? Around here, around 2000. There's where I will basically enter the market for a buy. Otherwise, I'm going to wait. Uh, until we break this, I'll buy somewhere in between here. When I see that, it will start to turn around. I don't think we'll go towards the 200 moving average or reach it. So, silver. This is very similar. Uh, we are rallying up towards the 50 moving average. I don't think we'll get there. Well, we'll find resistance here around 24, then break down again towards the 22 uh, uh, level. And then we'll head towards these lows at 21 and then towards 20. And there's what I think most buyers will come in and then uh, start pushing this uh, higher. I don't think we're going to break a 200 moving average. I don't think we're going to break above the 50 moving average. There's just too much uh, resistance above here. However, if we break this resistance, then we are going to go much higher. I just don't think that we're going to do that, at least in the short run. Uh, technical indicators are a little bit mixed. MACD is flat, stochastic is bullish, uh, CCI is bullish, and uh, RSI is technically flat. So waiting for an additional pullback in order to buy for the long run, around 20, at around 20. So if you look at uh, Cocoa, so Cocoa has just fallen apart since we got to the 50 moving average. Um, we have several trading uh, lines here, just get them up. We are trading in below, in, in between, sorry, the highs here of 2.7 or 2.0. So at this point, we have broken through most of these resistant areas here. This one, also this one, and this one, I mean support areas. And we are testing these lows here. So we can get them up around here. We are quite far away, we, we, if we go lower, which I think we are going to do, go, uh, if this breaks, then we are going to uh, 2.0. And that is your, probably your best entry for, for a buy. Uh, if, we, if we rally from here, that is also possible. Just uh, keep in mind that we will rally up towards this, uh, this price level here, which will act as resistant. If that breaks, then we'll go to 200 and then to 50, and then I think we'll go down again. What I think is going to happen is that we are going to break this uh, price level here at 2.2, and that will open the door to these very lows. The technical indicators for Kakoa are fairly bearish at this point. So um, entry here is quite risky. If you wanted to enter a, a sell, you should have done it here. Um, because we can turn around. It's more likely that we'll turn around here than it was to turn around here. So at this point, a buy should be done around here at 2.0 if we get to 2.0. So if you look at Platinum, Platinum is just doing more of the same I'm not even thinking about shorting this, even though that is obviously always a possibility because there's just too much support underneath. We need to break through both of these levels here in order to short, and then we'll go all the way down to 582. Um, I think we'll see more of the same. Uh, it is possible to buy this when we break the 50 moving average. When we see something similar to that, a candlestick above that, and then that will basically indicate that we are going higher. So around an entry point of buy is around the 910, something like that, or or above this um, this um, this uh, candlestick here at the 913. That will in indicate that we are going to go higher, and that means that we're going to target 978 and then 901,000. But 
In the short run, I think we're gonna see more of the same. Technical indicators are showing that we are turning around, but we need to break the 50 moving average. So, sugar. Sugar has rallied, uh, but we have not broken the top of this candlestick here uh, from last week. And until we do that, uh, we are not going further. We are nearly overbought. So I was hoping that we would uh, we would fall significantly further. Um, we need to break this low of the candlesticks, uh, like candlestick and the lows of these uh, of previous uh, one month ago, something like that, one month ago, three weeks ago, uh, in order to signal that we are going to towards the 50 moving average. So this the 0 0.1392 uh, is significant support. So just keep that in mind. I, I am not bullish here until we see the RSI get significantly lower. 67 is just too a high of an RSI to enter this market um, because it can turn around at any point. Even though that these technical indicators are fairly bullish, it is, uh, it is too risky to enter here with such a um, high RSI. It needs to fall back significantly further, get this down in order to enter for a buy. So this is just wait technically what happens. If we rally from here, then we'll find significant uh, resistance here at these highs of the 0 0.15. So, wheat, wheat has rallied, and I would probably say that this is the bottom. This was basically as far as we would we would go. This was previous support here for a very long time. And you can see that the RSI is down, it was down to 50 before we started rallying. Technical indicators are technically turning around. So it is probably, a, it is actually a good entry uh, for, uh, for a buy at this point. Um, I don't trade a lot of wheat. I was, I, I, I technically never traded wheat, but I can see that that <clears throat> this is a is a very bullish candlestick and and usually is this is what basically you are looking for a decline a decrease in the RSI technical indicators that are turning around you probably trade sideways pull back a little bit and trade sideways because the MACD is so far away from the signal line uh, but the <clears throat> CCI and the stochastic are turning around so when those do this will go and test these highs. So it is possible to enter here. You could see a, a little bit of pullback within the next few days. And you will target at least these highs at 634. Um, if that breaks, then of course it goes significantly higher. But this was basically the candlestick uh, we were waiting for. And it is um, possible to buy this now with a stop loss underneath the 50 moving average around 571. So, hope you find this helpful. Um, good luck and, um, uh, and uh, happy trading. Thank you very much.